Hi there, let's go over this integral that will require us to decompose the fraction into three parts. How do we know we're going to need to use partial fraction decomposition? Well, for starters, we've got a rational function. The numerator and denominator are both polynomials. Now, in some cases, we might have to do polynomial division first. However, if you imagine expanding the denominator, multiplying those terms together, the denominator is a polynomial of degree 3, which is greater than the degree of the numerator, and so we can go right into partial fraction decomposition in order to decompose the fraction to turn this into a manageable integral. I'm going to assume that you already have some experience with partial fraction decomposition. Check the description for a link to my lesson introducing the topic, if not. If you haven't seen it before, you might be able to follow along with this lesson, but it'll probably seem like I'm pulling some stuff out of nowhere. So here is our fraction, which of course we need to decompose before we can start to worry about the integral. We should begin by making sure the denominator is fully factored. That way we have an idea what our decomposition will look like, and then we can start to figure out what the numerators are. In this case, this factor of x minus 1 that's fully factored, it's linear, there's nothing more we can do there. But x squared minus 4 is a difference of squares, so we could factor that. You should know x squared minus 4, it's a difference of squares, so it's equal to x minus 2 times x plus 2. So I'll go ahead and replace x squared minus 4 with this product of linear factors. All right, there is our denominator fully factored. Since this rational function has a denominator that consists of three distinct linear factors, the decomposition is going to look like this. It'll have three parts. The numerators that we're going to have to solve for are a, b, and c. And the denominators are the three distinct linear factors. This is what our decomposition has to look like. Now we just have to figure out what a, b, and c are. And to start doing that, we need to multiply both sides of this equation by the denominator. So on the left, we'll multiply by x minus 2 times x plus 2 times x minus 1, which will, of course, eliminate the denominator. And on the right, we'll also multiply by x minus 2 times x plus 2 times x minus 1, which will end up giving us some different things in each of these terms. Okay, let's write out this equation. Again, we've multiplied both sides by the denominator, so it's gone on the left, and we just have the numerator on the left. But on the right, what's going to happen? Let's go term by term. If I multiply a over x minus 2 by this whole denominator, the x minus 2's are going to cancel out. And so what's going to be left is a times x plus 2 times x minus 1. a times x plus 2 times x minus 1. Similar things happen with the other terms. If we multiply b over x plus 2 by the whole denominator, the x plus 2's will cancel out, and we'll just be left with b multiplied by x minus 2 and x minus 1. b times x minus 2 and b times x minus 1. And of course, it's going to work similarly with c. c over x minus 1, if we multiply it by this whole denominator, the x minus 1's cancel out, and we're going to be left with c times the other two factors. Finally, there it is, the equation we get by multiplying both sides of this equation by this messy denominator. Now, since all of these factors are linear terms, it'll be pretty easy to just plug in some values of x that will eliminate two of the terms, and then we can just solve for the unknown in the remaining term. I'll slowly and carefully walk you through one example of that, and then speed a little bit through the other two. So here it is, now we're gonna solve for a, b, and c. The first step, if I plug in x equals 2, then this will be 0, 
and this will be zero, and so these terms will be gone, and then we can go ahead and solve for a. So this is the first thing we're gonna do. We're going to set x equal to two in order to solve for a. And let's start over here on the left, plugging in x equals two. That's gonna give us six times x squared, so that's six times two squared, which is four, and then minus eight times x, Again, x is two, and then minus four, and this is equal to six times four is 24, minus 16 is eight, and then minus four is four. So that's equal to four. That's what we've got on the left. So four equals whatever we've got on the right when x equals two. When x equals two, like we said, the b and the c terms go away, uh, but what about the term with a? Well, we're gonna have a times x plus two, so that's four, times x minus one, which is one, and so four equals four a. That's easy enough. That means that a is equal to one. Easy as that. Now, to solve for b, we're gonna need to plug in x equals negative two. That's going to eliminate the a and c terms. So x equals negative two, that's gonna be the second thing we do. And then to solve for c, we'll have to plug in x equals one, because that's gonna get rid of the a and the b terms. So that's the third thing is x equals one. And I'll just go ahead and speed up the video as I carry through these computations because I think it's pretty straightforward. You can let me know in the comments if you want me to not do that in the future, but I think it's a fine idea. So let's speed on through this. Again, starting on the left side of the equation, we've got six times negative two squared, which is just positive four, minus eight times negative two, minus four. And what's this equal to? Six times four is 24, minus eight times negative two, so that's plus 16. So that's 24 plus 16, which is 40, minus four is going to give us 36. So on the left side of the equation, we've got 36 equals, and x equals negative two gets rid of the a term, gets rid of the c term, we've just got to focus on b. x equals negative two, so we've got b times negative two minus two, which is negative four, times negative two minus one, which is negative three, and so this is equal to 12b. If 12b equals 36, then b has to equal three. All right, let's change colors and go ahead and solve for c. Now we're letting x equal one, that's really easy. So again, we'll start on the left side of the equation. Six times one squared is just six times one, so I'm just gonna write six, and then minus eight times one, so just minus eight, and then minus four. This is negative two minus four, so negative six. So on the left side of the equation, we've got negative six equals, on the right, a and b are gone to zero since x is equal to one, and then on the right, we've got c times one minus two, so negative one, times one plus two, so three. That's negative three c. And so dividing both sides by negative three tells us that c is equal to two. All right, we've got the decomposition figured out. A is one, b is three, c is two. Let's go ahead and write that here. A, we figured that out. B, we figured that out. C, we figured that out. One, three, and c was two. So we have finished decomposing the fraction into three parts. And now finally, we can get back to the crux of the problem, which is actually doing the integral. And now it'll be pretty easy. Let's go ahead and rewrite the integral. Here's the rewritten integral using our fraction decomposition. I just went to a new page so that we have more room to actually write this integral out. Should be pretty easy now. This is all just a bunch of natural logs. So let's do the integral. We're gonna have the natural log of x minus two. That's the integral of this one. And then plus three times the natural log of x plus two. And then finally, plus two times the natural log of x minus one and plus our arbitrary constant. Now we could make this look a little nicer by just using some log rules. For the second line, recall that multiplying a log on the outside is the same as having a power on the inside. So three ln x plus two turns into ln of x plus two to the third, and so on. And then also, adding logs together is the same as having a single log with the insides all multiplied together. And so our final answer is just this ugly natural log plus our arbitrary constant c. I've gone back to the top of the document and tried to squeeze our answer in there, so now you can also see all the work we had to do to get there. So that's how you do partial fraction decomposition with a fraction that's got three distinct linear factors, and that's how you use it in order to evaluate an integral. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. See through
big glass jar Abstracting everything Aligned in rows of crows 